Right, uh, so we can now um, just move these out of the way a bit. I'm going to introduce you to uh, yet another um, object which refers to uh, the buffer object, and that is waveform. And it looks like that, and you will notice it's very similar to what you saw when you double clicked on the buffer. Um, insofar, uh, well, it's actually become more similar, yet more similar in a minute. What we need to do, what this does is to uh, represent the waveform that is contained within the buffer. So it's a graphical display object, and it, you also have a very variety of different means of uh, interacting with that object. So we will send uh, a message to tell it which buffer to refer to um, and I do that by sending message set and then the name of the buffer that I want it to uh, speak to so to speak so my sound one send it to there and off we go so now you can see it's basically that um, what, what we see there um, <coughs> you'll notice though that it only has one channel what it's doing by default is to read channel one if I want to read channel 2, I will need a second one. So I would need to tell this channel, um, although it does it by default, to read channel 1. So I send a second argument uh, for the set message. Um, and then I would need to duplicate this and tell this one to read channel 2. I'm not sure how obvious it will be from this that they are different, but they are. Um, so. Um, for the time being, I'm not going to worry too much about the second channel because um, uh, we're, we're, I'm more concerned about time than I am about the uh, you know what what's um, the, the visual display of both. Um, so that's fine. Like I say, you can interact with the um, the uh, the waveform within this window. And you do that by sending um, a, diff a series of different modes, and it recognises four. Um, it recognises mode um, draw and mode um, move, mode select, and mode oops mode loop. So four different modes, and they make it behave in different ways, or at least they al it allows you to interact with the sound in different well, the, the, what what's in the buffer in different ways. Oops. Ah. So um, we'll start with mode move. Um, you get a hand, and this allows you to zoom in and out of the file. So. The, the, the waveform so it doesn't change anything particularly about it or the behavior of uh, anything it's just um, zooming in or allowing you to zoom in and it, oh, you can see as I move around it will um, it will move around it sort of allows you to navigate the uh, the waveform um, mode select allows you to select a portion of the way the uh, waveform and so I click and drag just as I would in an editor and then having made a, made a uh, selection, I could then go to mode loop and it, uh, it uh, changes to a double-ended arrow, uh, double arrow. And here I can use a similar kind of movement that I used with move, but this time to change the size of the loop, uh, the, the loop section or the selection and move that around and make it bigger and smaller by um, uh, moving the mouse up and down. Then I also have what's called mode draw. We're not going to use this at this point. The cursor can ch changes to a crosshairs, and this actually allows me to draw in a wave shape. Now, I wouldn't want to do that here because it would ruin the wave that I already have. But I would use it, for example, um, uh, when we come on to uh, uh, synthesis using the cycle object. So we're basically using the buffer as a wave table. That cycle will read through. This won't mean an awful lot until you get on to exercises 5a, um, but, uh, but we will come back to it later. 
Anyway, so there's those four mo four modes. I'm going to get rid of mode draw because we don't need it. Um, but if I go back to mode select, I'm going to add some outlets to the uh, or some number boxes that are going to be connected to two of the outlets, and they are the selection end and the selection start. And you will notice that when I make a selection, numbers come out of the those outlets which refer to the selection end and the selection uh, finish and I could use those uh, as loop points so I actually have a graphical display of my loop so if I connect this um, uh, loop start or selection start to the loop start and then the selection end to the loop end then my loop points are going to change and so if I make uh, if I start this playing back I can I can uh, make selections which um, but you can hear what's happening. So I can choose my loop points using a graphical display. And then if I go to the uh, mode loop, then obviously I can change the size of that and move it through the file. So the waveform display object can be quite useful in that respect. Um, what we could do in addition to this is to, well there's a variety of reasons why that might be useful to us, um, and I'll come back with some examples of how you can use the, um, the waveform display object and so on for looping in due course, uh, possibly when we move into uh, another set of exercises.